this was the piece before, bound for the trash. This was the piece after. I have a good story about that coming up. Sometimes seeing the treasure and something that's gonna be thrown out really can be very rewarding. The top was really trashed and wasn't something that could be redeemed by sanding. I'm using a hardening compound. You want to just mix a teeny bit of the hardener with this compound, use a well-ventilated area, and I'm just using a popsicle stick to fill in some of these really deep gouges. This stuff dries fast, so only mix up a little bit at a time, otherwise you might risk just wasting some of it. This is the current state of things. I'm gonna sand this. It is like most of the US today, uh, almost July 1st. It is incredibly hot here in Northern California. So I'm gonna work in the garage as long as I can stand it and then I'm gonna move this inside and I've got more fun things coming and what we're gonna do to it. I definitely went a little heavy handed on this because I'm gonna end up probably sanding a lot of this off. I started with a 120 grit sandpaper. I will finish with 320. Be sure to empty the cup there with the dust and change that pad often. I like to add wheels to furniture whenever I can. So I just used this scraper to pull out the stoppers that were in these legs. It was kind of rusty and gross underneath. So I scraped some of that off. Now I am going to use just just small casters and I'm drilling pilot holes with a really thin drill bit then I will come in and just screw those in this is not that heavy of a piece so I'm not too worried about the weight capacity this is gonna make this piece much more versatile and it will be a lot of different options for wherever this goes to be sure not to go too tight on those screws in case you have to realign them Okay, the prep work mostly is done. Time to move it into the house and you can watch my little dance as I take it out of the garage into the air conditioned house. This piece is old and I've had to sand and fill. And when you come across an old piece like this, it's for sure going to have an old, very icky stain on it. And it will come through any paint that doesn't have an oil-based shellac primer in it. So to solve this, just use DIY Paint Salvation Solution. It has a little smell to it. So just open the windows or make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. One thin coat, it comes in white and clear. I highly recommend keeping this on hand because uh, when you come across a piece that's a bleeder, it's really not fun to have to paint the whole thing again. Salvation Solution is pretty thin, so just brush on and watch for drips. This is going to be all cloudy looking. Most likely if you have a really old piece where the stain has flaked off in places, you've sanded it as smooth as you can. It's not going to show once you get your makeup on it. Your paint. Think of this as like over 50 like me. You sometimes have to put every time you got to put color corrector on before you put your makeup on so this is like the color collector color corrector so it will look amazing once we get the DIY paint on this isn't normally necessary but when you're working with really old stuff I highly recommend salvation solution I picked up this piece from someone who was selling their parents home and sadly most of the furniture was not in good shape they had great memories of their grandmother using this dresser of their mother using this dresser but it was headed for the dump when they found out that I restore furniture after I was buying some of the stuff that was in better shape, they offered me this piece for free and were just so thrilled when I explained that I could do something new with it. This is the state of my garage at any given time. I often find cast off pieces or people will give me things or I just go dumpster diving. I try to only take things I know I can repair, but I really try to save as many things as I can from a landfill. It gives me a lot of joy to make something useful and beautiful from something that was thrown in the trash. Here's a look at the top. You guys are not gonna believe what it looks like when it's painted and stained. I am going to make a sage green classic color. So I am mixing about five parts mint chip with one part gypsy green. You can add a little bit more depending on how dark you wanted it, but it really darkens this up. It'll be the perfect color for this piece. I have been painting furniture for about 20 years now. And trust me, when I say this, I still make this mistake. Before you get started, take all the drawers out and paint in 
here because once, especially with an old piece, once you close the drawers, you will see where you didn't paint. This piece, I put stoppers where I could. I did as many repairs as I could. The drawers are still wonky. It's so old, It's it's been so trashed. Hopefully this will go to someone's house where they want it for like a coffee bar or something fun like that and store a few things in the drawers. I can't stress this enough how much headache it will save you later. I am using my one inch brush that I like to use for the trim. Be sure you get the rails in between where the drawers meet and anything that might possibly show. And since you have paint on your brush, go ahead and get the sides of it as well. For all the really flat, large surfaces, I am using the new DIY paint brush called the Feather. Brushes are as soft as makeup brushes. They hold a ton of paint and you will have very few brush strokes. So I like to start at one end or in the middle when I'm doing a flat surface and pull the brush as far as you can all the way down. Don't do a lot of small back and forth. Now when you're finished, wrap your brush in some plastic wrap and it will stay nice and airtight until you're ready to come back. For the second coat, I like to spray with a little bit of water from the Continuous Mister bottle, and this will allow that second coat to really flow nicely over the previous coat, and you're getting practically no brush marks. I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the fronts of the drawers here, pulling all the way over, and also on the drawers. So I am using the Continuous Mister to really get that paint to flow. Sometimes I think of the first coat as my primer coat, and the second or third coat will definitely be your finished coats. Ready to do the top. This is going to get a fake stain color. So it's just, if you can see, this is like the little gray dots are where I use the JB Weld compound or the, um, you know, the compound to fix the really deep scratches and things that were wrong with this. So I'm gonna show you a trick I like to do I use DIY paint, layered chocolate, and I'm gonna do a couple of coats of it. Then I'm gonna go over it with DIY paint, dark and decrepit, all natural stain, and it will really mimic the look of hard wood, and it will be hard to tell the difference. One of my favorite things about DIY paint is not only that it is all natural, super durable, and so easy to use, but there are literally endless color combinations and faux finishes you can make with it. We call it Magic paint because it is so fun to manipulate and come up with new finishes. Layered chocolate is definitely one you want to keep in your toolbox as you can do so many things with it. Okay, I am back to the second coat of the dresser getting the drawers done and because all the DIY paint colors are super pigmented, two coats is going to be plenty for this dresser. While I'm waiting for the top to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and start distressing as I'm also waiting for the front of the door to dry. I need to put just one final coat on it. So what I like to do to smooth out the DIY paint is I take a piece of 320 grit sandpaper and then I fold it into thirds. And this way you have three sides to work with really well. So I'm just going to just very gently go over this. You could do this with um, an orbital sander or hand sander. They do make 320 grit pads. And then once you fill it, it's so smooth. It's really, really smooth. So, you know, there there is not a perfect flat surface to this. This is not a flawless piece, but it's old. It has character and it's gonna go and serve someone's family and provide a lot of joy for some years to come. As I'm sanding, I like to use my other hand just to feel how smooth it is. This lets me know how much more I might need to sand. If you want more distressing around the edges, I recommend a 220 grit sandpaper. I'm going to show you how to create a fake wood grain look. So we already put down the layer of layered chocolate. Now I am lightly brushing out the sponge brush, one part dark and decrepit patina and one part gray patina. Just like I showed with the paint, try to go all the way to the end and then work on the wet edge. 
Okay, this is where you really need the new DIY paintbrush, the feather. You want to really lightly go over where you just stained. So work in sections. I would not recommend another paintbrush because the bristles will be too stiff and take up too much, but you wanna go lightly over it and then have a rag or a shop towel nearby and just wipe off the excess stain. You wanna keep doing this over every section that you stain and you are going to get this beautiful, look that's going to look like real wood stain. If you wanted an even deeper look, you could do this process twice. Time for the big finish. I really like actually how this turned out with a little bit of the original weird stain coming through. It just adds to the character of it. I'm using DIY paint, paint clear wax. This is going to give a really soft, beautiful finish. The paint has dried really fast. It's hot out today. I am just using a regular waxing brush. I'm just putting a little bit on here. It's going to really penetrate the paint. If you've done multiple colors, it's going to be very translucent. We call this the wax freakout factor. Don't worry, you did not ruin your piece. If the paint is nice and dry, it will not take up the paint. It might be just a little bit of color transfer just because all of the DIY paint is so highly pigmented. But once it dries, it's going, it's going to look translucent. That just means the wax is really penetrating it. Once it dries and it's not sticky, and once you buff it, you're gonna get this beautiful soft sheen. And it really lends itself to an old piece of furniture because there did not used to be brush on finishes. Of course, we do have some amazing brush on finishes, but for a piece like this, I really feel like it needs to be waxed. A trick to give yourself a nice, really good faux wood grain. I'm adding dark and decrepit wax here. Now, this also is going to serve as yet another barrier. So if anybody spills soda or wine or coffee, it's going to just puddle up on the top because now I have an oil-based over a water-based. Don't you love it when everything turns out the way that it was in your head? It doesn't always happen, especially when you're dealing with really old furniture. So I really am so pleased. I like the distressed look on this. Everything about it turned out so good, better than I had planned. And I can't wait to show you the top. It looks like real wood. I'm gonna go ahead and buff it now. So you can use a lint-free rag, which is a little labor intensive, but you get a beautiful shine with it. I like to use this attachment. I will, um, this company is no longer available that I used to sell them, but I found a very similar comparable one on Amazon and I will put that link below that you can use if you want to try it. This is my favorite because it goes super fast. You don't have to put a lot of intensity into it. It, If you don't have a drill, there are some really excellent buffing brushes on the market as well. Or if you're not like doing lots of furniture like I do, then this is awesome and you're going to get a beautiful finish just with this. So let's get started doing this. So I'm showing you with the Buffy brush here and it would be the same if you purchased this similar brush from Amazon. If you're doing this with a rag, just work in sections and I like to go in circular motion. It will produce the same really soft result. I like to go over with my hand then to just make sure there's no sticky spots. So this is where we started pretty beat up and needing help. And this is where we ended up. I hope I inspired you to take another look at a really old ruined piece of furniture. I'm so grateful I was able to give this piece a new life. It only took a few hours, yet now it will go on to benefit someone else's home for hopefully several generations to come. Here's another view of the top. I am moving the piece to sell at my space at Rancho Co-op in Oakley, California. Having those wheels on it made a big difference. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Head over to my blog where I have tons more tutorials. I've been doing this a long time and I love teaching and sharing with other people.